Matthias. Hey. Nice to see you again. Uh, two years ago I, uh, I met you in uh, Berlin and when you showed me the first uh, real data center failover of a Hyper-V uh, virtual machine. Now we are about one and a half years later. Maybe you can show me what's happened since then. Matthias Pop, I work for you in Packard and what we show here this year is um, actually how we integrated all of our mid-range and high-end storage systems with Hyper-V live migration and we show um, how you can live migrate a, a stock trading system between two data centers that are about uh, 200 kilometers or 120 miles apart. And what kind of storage are you using? Um, for this demonstration we are using uh, our new integration with the uh, TreePod storage systems. That was introduced this week uh, in, uh, at uh, HP Discover? Yes, so this is a brand new, it's actually the first um, integration that we did since the acquisition of TreePower last October. Oh, good to hear. Yeah. But it's, uh, it can be done also with, with all the storage systems like EVA? Yes, it's uh, working with the EVA storage system and the new P6000 uh, systems. It's also working with the XP and the uh, P9500 systems. Is that one and the same, the XP9500? The XP are the older versions and the, uh, the P9000 is the new name for the latest XP storage system. All right. So the okay. P9500 is the latest addition to the family of XP storage okay. systems. Oh, can you show us something? Or yeah. uh, maybe so look at the picture? So what we see here is um, a cluster of four nodes that is spread across two data centers. As I mentioned, it's um, about 200 kilometers apart and we have two um, TREPOR systems that are replicating between uh, data between each other and we are live migrating a virtual machine from uh, one server to another and that uh, server happens to be in a completely different data center and it's happening completely transparent to the cluster administrator or the okay. virtual machine administrator. And what are the basic uh, software ingredients? Uh, you have Hyper-V? Uh, yeah, we have Hyper-V. Um, we are running this on Windows 2008 or 2. And um, we are uh, using a software that is called the, um, uh, Remote Copy, uh, TreePower Remote Copy. Right. And that is able to replicate the data between one uh, TreePaw storage system and another. That's equivalent to uh, continuous access in the That's EVA correct. world. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the TreePaw system is actually able to either use fiber channel between the two arrays or IP. So you can actually use IP uh, links to replicate between two sto uh, TreePaw storage systems. Is that uh, synchronous or asynchronous in, or both? In case of uh, using live migration, we only support synchronous replication. Course, if you yeah. want to use this for um, uh, disaster recovery protection, you could also use asynchronous replication because we are doing uh, in-order uh, writes for the applications when we replicate them. Okay. So I would like to show you actually a live demo of the uh, software uh, feature and capabilities. Fine, let's do that. So what you see here on the screen is actually a live setup of um, a four-node cluster. Uh, it's using a majority node set uh, with file share. Um, and down here you see the cluster administrator GUI with a couple of VMs as well as a couple of applications in there. It's just an example. So we are using this for uh, showing how you can move an SQL server across data centers or a file share or a couple of virtual machines around here. And what you actually see here is there is a, uh, a virtual machine that is running an SQL server workload. It's a uh, stock exchange trading system. So there is clients that are trading stocks and the system here is the database that basically takes care of all the uh, trading, selling and buying stocks uh, of those clients. Up cool. here, on the right, um, you actually see um, the physical workload that that virtual machine creates on uh, the host in one data center 
we are running at about 1500 IOs per second uh, while we are doing about 300 transactions per second. And on the left side is the node, uh, basically the same window uh, right of there. a node that is going to receive that workload in the other data center. Okay. The difference between the two here is they are 200 kilometers apart. It's quite a, di quite a distance for yeah. children's replication. Yeah. And so what you would do if you are the cluster administrator, you would go in here, click on the uh, virtual machine, and then you select live migrate. And as you can see here, uh, it doesn't tell you that the hosts are in different data centers. What we will do with the cluster, right? Right. Yeah. And what what we will do with the cluster extension software is we will automatically figure out that the storage systems um, are not the same that are uh, connected to those servers. So we live migrate and um, you can see down here Microsoft is moving the uh, virtual machine memory um, from one server over here to the other server over here. And the storage is still connected to and one data center? The storage is still connected. Actually, what you can see over here, we are still having transactions going on. If we move this further to the right. Yes. Um, so we are still running with 30 transactions per second here at this point in time while the uh, virtual machine is moved. We can zoom out a little. You can see uh, we are pushing the virtual machine memory across the two That's data the centers. Activity. Right. Yeah. And right now we already swapped the replication direction and we are now restarting or uh, towing the virtual machine. It's now running again, but in the other data center. So it moved from host 14 to 22. Which is in the other data center. And you can see over here, there is no I.O. going on in this data center anymore. It's now going on in the other data center over here. Oh yes, now you can see it over there. The green line. And, and now you can it's using the disks in the other data center. Yes. And you can also see down here, the virtual machine is running at its full 300 uh, uh, transactions per second and we never lost the connectivity to the client. Uh, okay. This is the remote desktop client so we never lost connectivity to that actual virtual machine while so, it's so migrating. We, we changed data centers, we changed hosts and we changed storage. That's correct. Yeah. But all while all the clients are still connected. And how, how is the IP uh, doing all this because if you're going to another data center, are the, are the VLANs um, uh, it's a, what you call it's that? It's a single uh, stretch single, single VLAN single stretch across, VLAN, the, that's the, across the two sites. Yeah. So what you do need in order to live migrate uh, VMs is a single subnet because all the clients need to keep uh, accessing that same IP address, otherwise it wouldn't be a live migration. And the and majority was made by the uh, uh, majority node plus file share, right. and that file share is in, in, in a third data center? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Would, would that file share, could that be in a cloud or do the, yeah, the customer have? The file share could run on any, uh, uh, or the file share quorum could be created by any node in, uh, in the data center uh, that is outside of any of the two data centers there. So it could be at a cloud provider or it could be in uh, another data center or building. Okay. And uh, one thing um, about the, the type of disk, Hyper-V disk that is being used, uh, I believe cluster shared volumes was not supported yet. Right, so we are still uh, not supporting cluster shared volumes uh, because of some limitations um, of the, uh, the way we integrate with uh, our remote application and the way cluster shared volumes work within the Hyper-V uh, cluster environment. Um, we do work with Microsoft on getting that supported in one of the next versions of uh, the operating system. Okay, so we're looking forward to have uh, that kind of storage supported yeah. as well. And, all right. So this will be in the future at some point in time. Well, Matthias, that was a very nice uh, explanation of the uh, data center failover. I'd like to thank you very much. You'll probably see this on my blog uh, very soon. Thank, thank you very you. much.